Hey everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Um, I have to send this back. This is the uh, Zygu Shagu. I don't know how you pronounce it. I should ask. Um, and I want to thank Radiodity for sending this my way. Uh, this has been it's been kind of a goal of mine to test one of these. Unfortunately, I have to say that it came to me one of the dur during one of the busier times in my in my job during the season, and uh, a week also one of those weeks I was completely sick the kid was sick the wife was sick we were all sick so um, it was a little tougher to get things done and uh, I did not get to get out with this the way I wanted to I did one uh, soda activation and uh, that was a lot of fun but uh, it did reveal one flaw in the system in this thing uh, it may just have to do with it's a pre-production model and it does not have the hardware updates that correspond with the latest firmware updates so Anyway, I love this radio. I think it's great. I think for the price, it's really hard to beat the fact that you've got onboard battery, the ability to work with up to 10 watts on an external power source. And, um, you know, it would be cool if they offered this in a non-batteried version so that you could have your own battery. Um, but either way, it I think it works great. And I think it does digital better than my uh, Yaesu FT891, as in it syncs with the computer, like, spot on every time uh the 891 instead of for jsa call instead of 7.078 can every time the uh, cat control defaults to 7.077 and uh i don't understand that it's just this it's kind of obnoxious but this works um the one flaw though is i have to go in and set the audio input output on the uh, jsa call settings every time i connect this almost back to the USB. So, um, and that could be this hardware issue, who knows? But I'm really happy with what this does and um, I have not been want for more radio when I've been out in the field. And in fact, I did, on my soda activation, I didn't even use the battery so I could run the full 10 watts. I ran five watts out of a dipole. Um, and if you're running five watts, you should probably run a dipole. Anyway, um, I'm gonna show you a couple things that I thought were interesting that uh, I don't, in some of the other videos I've watched, uh, probably weren't talked about. And um, it's more of the technical stuff as far as like the buttons and what they do. So let's uh, jump in here and then we'll do a couple other things. Okay, so um, something I think that could be done better here is uh, get rid of the reflective screen. This is really difficult to see if there's any any sunlight, I mean, you can see my reflection, this, this QRP style radio should not have a reflective screen. Um, I do not like that and it is not necessary. There we go. Okay. All right, so right now listening to 20 meters. Now this is, you know, the A, you can see the B is 7238. That's kind of cool. And that is by hitting the AB button. And you can just toggle back and forth like that. I, I think another thing that the manual doesn't talk about that is really annoying <clears throat> is figuring out how to do the memory. So I put in memory one in 7.194 megahertz. And if I go down to memory edit, I'll show you all the different memories I've got put in here. It actually is kind of fun because it saves the VFO B. I think that is really convenient. So what they don't tell you is how to access the memories. So to access the memories, you select that button and then you toggle with the arrow buttons up here. And the only reason I can think that the knobs don't do anything is, and you can see that it's like the knobs aren't doing anything. You have to select with this. The only thing I can think of was efficiency in space. So select that button to activate the memory, select with the arrows to toggle between the memories, and um, then you go back and you hold down on your memory button, and that pulls up that memory. And notice the, the A and B have both switched. So you can toggle between uh, the CW frequency and 14 to 283.5. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So how you do that is quick press, toggle your memory with your arrow keys, 
and then long press on the memory via or the MV key. Um, I think that's great. And in here, the memory edit, that's under the general menu, this one, general. Um, you can go through and change those as necessary, and you can navigate that with your uh, frequency knob, your VFO knob. Um, edit, you can change the name, and I think that's pretty convenient. So anyway, that's enough on the memory. Uh, I figured that out just by playing with the buttons. Another thing that I think was interesting was when you go into the actual menus, toggling, use the, the multifunction knob, MFK, to go between the different menu settings. But in order to change the menu settings, you've got to go down and push this button, plus minus to change it. Well, they don't talk about that. You can just use the frequency dial. See that mic gain? Up, down, frequency dial. So that's convenient. And the other thing I think is fun is if you hit this button, the box with the check mark in it, watch this, the TX power box, that is something you can change. So now it's the H mic gain. So the default on when you're not into a menu or a setting screen, when you turn the multifunction knob, it changes the setting on that instead of the power. So it's probably a, a really handy thing if you're uh, transmitting with somebody and trying to figure out if your mic gain is set properly. You can quickly change that. So go back into your radio setting. I like having the power output. So I'm gonna go back and put that in. Under the apps, I've probably shown this one quite a bit. I, I do like the SWR scan, but it is a little bit um, broad. It's, I mean, I don't have a use at 6.8 megahertz or 6.9 megahertz. It's just, it's just too much. So the other thing I think that's interesting is it's transmitting at almost four, three and a half watts. Um, I'm not sure why it wants to do that during an SWR scan, but I'm pretty proud of this antenna. Look at that. And you can see if you watch the SWR meter, it shows you where it starts to climb a little bit and it should start to climb pretty soon. Um, this is my familiarity with this antenna. Again, CW trainer. I actually found the trainer to be useful, but <clears throat> all you have to do like on my FT891 is you just turn off the break in uh, and then it, it, it defaults to a trainer, but it's not called a trainer. So um, yeah, at any rate, this uh, at five watts, I was running 80 meters the other night and I was able to bounce over an Envis into the Ogden area as I'm in Heber. So that's, you know, that's uh, where that SDR, uh, web SDR antenna is, is actually about 80 miles away. And I was able to hear myself. So we'll note that five watts was able to do Envis on 80 meters at night. Um, and this radio is plenty adequate for that. Uh, some of the things, I'd like to talk to you about on this radio just in general. Like construction, it's got this all aluminum casing. At least I think it's aluminum. Now, that's kind of nice, it's sturdy. It has these heat radiators. Uh, so it does behave like a heat sink a little bit. But I will say, even though it was cold the other night and um, I was running five watts out and I was connected to the battery or to my external battery, this back plate was still getting kind of warm. Now, I don't know what it is with the charge controllers, but it's probably allowing too quick of a charge um, during use or any charging during use. And so it's causing uh, these batteries to heat up. But it's not that bad. I mean, batteries get warm when they're used. So it would be interesting to see in the heat of summer how this behaves. But uh, I am pretty confident that it will still work very well, especially running 5 watts. I think 10 watts uh, you might reduce your duty cycle so yeah anyhow this this is just some thoughts there um i'm gonna hold down the lock key here unlock this and now that pretty much is only for the vfo knob or for your frequency knob just looking for maybe there's somebody out there the other thing that you know volume squelch rfg rf gain to toggle that, you can see in the top menu box there, squelch threshold, RF gain, 
just push on the volume knob. I think the knob height could change. Could be half as tall as they are. It'd be much easier for storage and uh, be less likely to really give them a good bump if uh, while they're in your pack. All right, another thing that kind of bugged me is the mic. Now, other, other channels have talked about the mic a bit. There's way too many buttons. In fact, um, for me personally, I never use the buttons on my HF mic. So on my 891, the buttons even on there are pretty useless, except for maybe centering down to 0.00 on um, my Hertz. So I think that Zygu should offer this mic as just a mic, uh, a trimmed down version, maybe a little smaller with just a PTT. And um, the other thing about that, let's adjust this here, plug it in, and there's backlight uh, for all those buttons. This is an energy drain. Um, and as far as I know, I don't believe you can turn that off. I might be wrong. Someone mention in the comments if I'm wrong or not. I haven't had enough time to dive into uh, whether or not it can turn this off. Um, Charlie over at Red Summit RF, check out that channel, he's great, um, pointed out that unless you have a knife or something to wedge in there, you're not going to unplug this. Well, no, it's like childproof. So, uh, so it's lights up, it's got way too many buttons, and I just don't need them. And if I were to buy this radio, one of the first things I would do would buy a separate mic, a much smaller mic, say, say like the Yesu HT mic, and splice it, <laughs> get one of these little connectors, and hook that into the radio instead, just so I have something much simpler. Uh, and in the instruction manual, it does give you a schematic of what each one of those wires does in the cable. So you could technically build your own mic and, and be able to have that option. But I really wish that they would offer a QRP style mic. Okay, now, um, I have some other videos of connecting it to computer, but I'm connected now. And well, let's just go open up JS8 call. And I'm going to adjust the frequency on the computer so the cat control is active and it's instant. You see that? All right, so here we are in JS8 call. And the settings are all, we've got another video for that. Uh, thank you, Ham Radio Crash Course Josh. He really, he crushed it with that. And, and honestly, mine set up way easier than, than he was talking about, which is awesome. So what I did notice, if you go over to your settings is, and I think I talked about this a minute ago, you gotta make sure the microphone and, and speaker are connected to USB audio device. That means the radio is, is connected. So let's do this. I'm gonna send a heartbeat out of the 40 meter antenna. That's probably, it's not gonna go anywhere, I, I doubt, <laughs> like with the propagation the way it just today. Um, so there we go. There's the four watts. Now this is a pre-production model, so the hardware prevented it from going past 3.5 watts on um, on 40 meters. So now I, I, I've been made aware that that has been fixed. So. I need to wipe this down and I need to clean it up and uh, get it boxed up. So everyone, thank you for checking this out. I will have more uh, more documentation forthcoming. I just wanted to get this one out there. Kind of some of the additional things I discovered just using the radio that I thought were actually really noteworthy. This is a cool radio. And for the price, it's hard to beat. I, I really like the idea of the ICOM 705. I was absolutely in love with the TX500 Discovery. And unfortunately, that's not gonna be available for a while, and at least not in the United States. And um, this is a great option. And at the price, like again, you just it's hard to beat. It has onboard batteries, has onboard tuner. It's got uh, you know all the HF frequencies. It doesn't have 
uh, two meter single sideband or all mode two meter, which I thought would, would have been kind of fun. All right, everybody, I'll see you down the trail. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, taking a look at this Zygu X6100. This, is this has been a fun radio, and thank you, Radiodity, again for letting me have some time with this.